Hello, this is Kyle, also known as Alien Tube. Welcome to part two of my Balor Arms 15th century arming sword review. If you haven't seen it yet, here's a link to part one, wherein I discuss most of my thoughts about the sword, as well as the recent Balor Arms steel controversy. This part two video will feature some cutting footage, impressions after cutting, and then my final thoughts. Before getting to the cutting, please take a moment to hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Your support means a lot to me and it really helps the channel continue to grow. Thanks. Alright, so as you can see, sharpening job on this was just not very good. Right here in the sweet spot, it's completely dull. I could run my fingers along this with absolutely no issue. This side, it's marginally sharp. I was able to do a little bit of cutting, but on anything even remotely tough like the 2 liter bottles, mostly just bounced off them. It's a lot of fun to swing around though. I enjoy using it. I just would enjoy using it a lot more if it was actually sharp. So now it's time to talk bottom line. Is the Balor Arms 15th century arming sword worth the list price of $219.95? Yes, I think it is. It's a great looking sword, and it's not easy to find a well-executed hollow ground sword in this price range. In addition, it's quite fun to swing, and I think it would make for an excellent cutter if it were sharper. Which brings me to Cult of Athena's sharpening service. My recent experiences with it have not been good. In fact, they've been downright disappointing. To the point where I don't think it's worth it anymore. It's really a shame, because if you're like me and not adept at sharpening, it can be really difficult to find somebody able to do a good job. And that's going to bring this review to a close. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Alien Toot out.